Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome today. We're so glad you joined joined us on Jesus the Healer. I tell you, we're having a good time with the Word in this place. And I have a studio audience and we're all ready to receive. We're bringing our faith. I know that you are too. You know, we, we not only want to know what the Word has to say, but we want to know what we're to say. Right. Amen. And so we've been looking at this scripture here in Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. Paul wrote and he said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. So we see we've been focusing on the last several episodes on this word called righteousness because righteousness is who we are in Christ. Yes. We are made right with God because Jesus provided it for us. We're not right with God because we've done everything right. Yes. And uh, the enemy always points to our flesh of what we haven't done right, trying to get us to walk apart from a righteousness consciousness. Mm -hmm. But we need to be conscious. Wait a minute. Jesus made me right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's a free gift of righteousness. Yeah. It's not something yeah. earned. Jesus was right with God and he made that righteousness a free gift to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Do you know you're not more or less righteous? Your righteousness never grows. You're either righteous or not. And if you're born again, Jesus made you righteous. Yes. And so we've been looking at that because Jesus said the kingdom of God's in you. Mm -hmm. And Paul made the statement in the verse we just stated in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, when he said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So how many of you know that's in you? You are the righteousness of God right now. Yes. Do yourself the favor of finding out who you are in Christ Amen. by going through the word reading through the scriptures and meditating on them. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, how do you meditate? You read them over and speak them over to yourself, muttering it to yourself. You say, I don't know if I understand quite what meditation is. Yes, you do. Worry is meditation in the negative direction. We all know what it's like to worry, to take a thought and just turn it over, rehearse it, play it out in our head maybe have conversations with people, run it, run it up this road and down that road, look at, looking at it from different angles. We do the same thing with the Word. Right. That's how we meditate and we get it on the inside of us because until the Word is in you, you can't spend it effectively. Right. You know, many times this is where I think people get, they, they misunderstand or become frustrated when they think, you know, I've, uh, I'm in faith, but it, it doesn't seem real to me. Well, you have to take time to make the Word yours, yes. to put the Word in you, yes. and to put you in the Word. Meditating on the Word is how you do that. Yes. So we have to meditate on these truths of who we are in Christ, what Jesus made ours. Because yes, healing's provided for us, prosperity is provided for us, but there is so much more provided for us. Righteousness, that we're right with God. That means we have, we're to have bold and a, a bold approach to God in His presence. Yes. Um, when we're, um, when we're not conscious that we're righteous, we're not going to be bold in the presence of God. And so we need to be bold. Remember what it says in, in, um, in Hebrews 4, verse 16, come boldly yeah. to the throne of grace that you may obtain, that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So there's a proper approach and only those who are righteous and conscious that they're righteous will come boldly. Mm -hmm. 
The devil wants to point to where you've missed it, what you've done wrong, so that you won't be bold in the presence of God. You'll almost have this, if I could say this underlying thought of God's mad at me. God's displeased with me. I failed at this. I failed at that. Righteousness consciousness gets rid of all that. Amen. Amen. Sin consciousness means you're just conscious of, of your sin. You're conscious of what you've done wrong. You're conscious, conscious of, where, of your past, where you've missed it, your faults, your failures, your weaknesses. That's sin consciousness. But we're to be righteousness yes. conscious. Yes. Conscious all the time, aware, I'm right with God. That's I have right. access to the Father. Amen. I, I have. I, I can be bold in His presence. Yes. I can come bold and lay hold of things. Amen. Amen. And so we we understand that the kingdom of God is is in us, and part of the flow of that kingdom is righteousness. Yes. What about this holiness? All these things that are to be the flow of our life. Um, we were reading in Isaiah chapter fifty four, verse thirteen. I want to read it again. Isaiah chapter fifty four, and verse thirteen says. For all my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. So notice this, those who are taught have greater peace. Yes. Those who are untaught will be troubled in their thought life. Yes. It matters that you have a pastor that's teaching that's you. Right. It matters right. that you listen to good word-based teaching. So true. Like what you see on the Victory Channel. Um, all the, the different programmers on here, what a blessing they are because they're contributing to your peace by contributing to your teaching. But you have to, you have to take that word and if I could say this, make it your own because you can't spend what you don't own. That's right. That's and many right. are trying to spend a verse they haven't taken time to own. It belongs to you, but it has to become real to you. Meditating on it makes it real to you. Isaiah 54, 13, meditate on it. Um, it, it, it will make these, these truths real to you. Verse 13, 14, 15, it says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Notice this, we have to, be, we have to establish in us that we are the righteousness right. of God. Right. In right. Now, Jesus established us in righteousness, right. meaning he made us righteous, but we have to yes. establish that in our own thinking, in our own hearts, in, in the way we speak, the way we, the way we interact with others, mm -hmm. that we are right. We're not because we've done everything right and not because we did enough to earn something right. from God. Right. You can't pray enough to earn it. No, you can't right. read your Bible enough to earn it. You can't confess enough scriptures to earn it. No. It's, and all those things are right. It's good to do those things, but we're not doing those things to earn something. No. He's already made us righteous. Amen. By doing those things, we find out that He's already made us right. righteous. That's as right. we pray, as we study, as we confess the Word, it becomes real to us yes. what He already made ours. So in verse 14, in righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. So many times people don't realize the reason that they're harassed and oppressed in their minds is because they've not yet established who Jesus made them to be. That's All the things he's made theirs. And then it goes on, it says, uh, uh, again in 14, In righteousness shalt thou, thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together. Oppression, fear, terror shall gather. But God says, but not by me. He's not sending it and he's not using it. That's right. He says, whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Why? Because you're righteous. When you understand, you have established yourself in righteousness, like verse 14, when those things come, they'll fall. They will not find a place of entrance into your life. So if we find ourselves being harassed by fear, depression, that is an invitation to further find out and renew our minds to who we are in Christ. Now, Go to all the scriptures, the in him verses that tell you in him, in whom, in Christ. We call these in him scriptures. We have a total list for you on our website at deframeministries.org. You can go. It's a free downloadable list. Do a search on in him scriptures and you can download it to your device. You can print it out, but don't just download it. 
feed on it. Yes, Meditate right. on it. Yes. Put it in your mouth. Say it to yourself. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you, you will find your, yourself completely refreshed mm-hmm. and elevated yes. in your thought life and mm-hmm. how you conduct your fellowship with God when it lands on the inside of you of who you are in Christ. Yes. The devil's got to get you, if I could say this, working against who you are right. in Christ. Mm-hmm. And so we have to realize that uh, we have an accuser of the brethren. and He's always trying to diminish who we are in Christ in our own thinking. He's trying to rob us of that so that we're not bold to stand up in that and to operate in that. Now, if we are not bold in our righteousness, we will not be bold in our faith. Because... um, when we have faith issues, we have really not been feeding on who we are and what he's made ours. Right, that's right. So the, the enemy will come with all kinds of condemnation, all kinds of guilt, all kinds of things of the past yes. to try to sway you from a consciousness mm-hmm. that you are right with God. Yes. He wants to constantly replay the past to you. Yes. He wants to replay the bad decisions you've made. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe in a, when marriages you've made bad decisions or in business or with your children or with other things you've made bad decisions and he con- the enemy who is the accuser of the, bre- of the brethren constantly wants to replay that before you because he knows if he does you will not be bold in your faith if you believe it, if you believe what those accusations. So when the Bible calls the devil, one of the names the Bible states for the devil is accuser of the brethren. The the word is revealing to us his strategy against us. He's an accuser. Yes. And we have to we have to not make sure we don't get under condemnation, guilt, shame. All of that is nothing but the past being put on replay yes, for you. That's it. Now, we have to remember this because 1 John 1, 9, what does it say? It says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Once we miss it, once we sin... Uh, There is that sense of unrighteousness, a sense we didn't do right, a sense we went against what is right. Uh But once you repent of that, he cleanses you from that sense that you didn't do right because what you didn't do right is gone now. The blood of Jesus makes it as though you never missed it. And too many times we are holding to remembering, speaking about, Mm -hmm. telling others, Mm -hmm. trying to sometimes relieve our conscience, Uh telling people what we've done wrong. And that's not what, that's not what cleanses the conscience. It's being cleansed by the blood of Jesus. That's what cleanses it. Now, to those, now let me, let me read to you Romans chapter eight and verse one. This is what God provided for us because of the blood of Jesus. There is therefore now Now. no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. What's this? We are in Christ. What's it mean in Christ Jesus? Well, how did we get in Christ? The blood cleansed us. That's That's how we became in Christ. Mm -hmm. We are in Christ. So once the blood has cleansed us, There's no condemnation, no no guilt, no shame. And so the blood puts it back as though we never missed it. We have to have faith in that. That when when we have a replay of what we've done wrong, we, we're blood conscious. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, that's part of being righteousness conscious right. because the blood purchased our righteousness. Yes. Now, um, do you ever, you know, I... Now in this digital age, we don't have so much of this, but I don't know if you remember VHSs, you know, a VHS <laughs> tape that you wanted to play a movie or something. And there were such things as what they would call pirated copies. Yes. That means that someone got hold of a copy that they didn't purchase right. or was not available for purchase yet. 
and it's a pirated copy. And um, I will say this, that to me, that's a good way to describe what the devil tries to use as the accuser of the brethren. Pirated copies of your past. Pirated copies of past events, past mistakes, past sins. He rips a copy. <laughs> if I could say this, he wants to play it before you. But you know, if someone had a pirated copy, you don't want to let anyone in authority know you got a pirated copy because it's illegal, (laughs) right? Anything the devil tries to replay of your past that you have repented of is illegal in the court of God. It will not stand up in the courtroom of heaven. Why? Because the blood of Jesus cleansed the tape of the past of your life. Cleansed. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. We're right with God. We are right with Him. This is part of what belongs to us. The flow of the kingdom of God is righteousness, that we are right with God. No condemnation. Don't allow for a moment the devil to bring back anything to condemn you with once you have repented of that. Now, get into the spiritual habit that once you know you missed it, you stop right there and repent. Don't carry it around for a a day, a week, a month, and try to reconcile it with your own heart because what will happen, it will weaken your faith. Because your conscience, which is the voice of your your spirit, Mm -hmm. your conscience knows you violated what's right. Right. So run to the Father. Don't try to hide it under a rug somewhere. Don't try to act like you didn't have a part in it or something, you don't know anything about it. No, uh, the more spiritual spiritual you are, the quicker you go to God. I have have two sons and they were both very different in raising them. They're nine years apart. My oldest son, he was a guy on the move. He all... Uh, Stephen would take everything apart, put it back together. That's a good thing. If he took it apart, he could put it back together. That's a good thing. But sometimes he got overly excited and would break things. So if he broke something, he would go and take it behind and put it behind my a chair in the dining room. He was younger then. He wasn't grown by then. <laughs> but he was younger then, and he would take it and put it behind the chair. And I'd find it, and I would go, Know anything about this? Don't know anything about that. Don't know anything about that. You do know you're the only child in the house. (laughs) I didn't put it there, and your daddy's on the road. He didn't put it there, so you might as well own up. He didn't get in near as much trouble if he just broke it and then came and showed it to me. Now, my second son, when he was young, if he would break something, he would run to me really quick. And he would hold it and say, Mommy, I broke this. And I'd say, no problem, baby. We can get that fixed. Or we can buy another one or we'll just glue it back up or whatever. There's always an easy fix. But you delay the help when you try to hide it. That's why, see, when you miss it, you need help. Don't delay the help. Run real quick. Run run to God. Don't hide from God. Don't draw back from God. He's not mad at you. He's there to help you. Amen. He's there to help. And the what, the primary way he helps us is cleanses us. Amen. If we confess our sin, confess it to him so that it doesn't lie hidden somewhere and it the, the broken thing, the thing that's not working right, doesn't get the help it needs. The quicker we get it into his hands, the quicker we get heaven's help in that situation. Yes. And so, um, so when we confess it, we have to believe, I'm cleansed from it right now, regardless of how you feel. And, you know, we know this, that even if we've missed it, God does not want us, once we've confessed it, God does not want us feeling bad for a week, for a month, because what that does, it injures our faith. We need to keep receiving from God. And if we're feeling bad, we're not going to be bold in God's presence to lay hold of things. So once we confess it, we're to believe that moment he cleanses me, whether I feel like it or not. And sometimes we miss it in a way that is really personal to us. I mean, it it lands in a way that grieves our own hearts. But even that, we have to we have to say no. No, he cleansed me. And I'm clean. And you have to forgive 
yourself. Yes. I said you have to forgive yourself because yes. if you don't, the accuser, the brethren will take that point where you missed it and he will hold you, hold you down under that. Yes. Now, so the word speaks about if our own heart condemns us not. Mm-hmm. Now see, your own heart, when you've missed it, your own heart will tell you. Don't wait for the accuser, the brethren to tell you That's right. before you take it before God and deal with it. Amen. 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 Now, there are, and we hear a lot about this now, and I, I don't, um, when someone has been in the military mm-hmm. and they come back and they deal with all kinds of replays, mm-hmm the reliving different things that happened to them maybe in that time of their service. What is it called? PTSD. And and not only that, they'll attribute though, they'll attribute PTSD to even certain traumatic events that happened in other people's lives, not necessarily just military, but anything traumatic. I want you to turn with me if you would in your Bibles go. I want you to see this. Um, Hebrews chapter nine. And verse 14, I want you to see something here. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14, it reads, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Look at that. Basically, it reads this, the blood of Jesus will purge your conscience yes. from dead works right. so that you can serve the living God. Um, I was reading one man's commentary on this verse and he said, well, first of all, you know the word conscience is the voice of your spirit, right? Mm-hmm. He said in this, he he used this, the word conscience here would also carry with it the meaning, the replay of the mind. How much more shall the blood of Jesus purge the replay of the mind from dead works so that you can serve the living God? When we've done something that is against the word, We sin, we miss it, we go a wrong direction, we do something that violates our own conscience. Once we've repented, as I said, you have to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Many times people struggle with forgiving themselves because they keep replaying that over and over in their mind. There's that replay of the mind. Your, the brain of man, it's a computer. We're so impressed with our computer age technology, but the first computer came from God, the, the, the brain of a man. It, it catalogs and records everything you see, everything you hear. Scientists will tell you that, that even if it's not in the front part where you recall it, it's cataloged somewhere. And, I, I, you know, there are things that will come back up. Haven't you had it, things from your childhood that you yeah. hadn't thought of? Your, you didn't even know you remembered it, and it'll come back up. And you'll, what is that? Because that, that, that brain cataloged that. Even traumatic, bad, hard things that happen in people's lives, it catalogs. Yes. And so they're trying, many times people spend a lot of time trying to outrun that, get away from that. But right here, we have the cure. Hebrews 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Jesus purge the conscience, the replay of the mind from dead works so that you can serve the living God? Did you know it hinders how you serve God? It hinders your fellowship with God when wrong things are constantly held to and rehearsed and replayed over and over in your thought life. Let me tell you this one testimony. Recently, I had discussed this with a pastor at one point, this verse, talking about this phrase, replay of the mind. And he said, Pastor Nancy, I want to tell you about there was a man who he had been in the military and he had seen a lot of difficult things that troubled him. And for years, he struggled with what they would call PTSD. And he said he was a Christian, but he never developed and, you know, found out who he was in Christ and renewed his mind with the word. And he said, but a man in my congregation that was a friend of his 
was with him at the time that this military man died. And he said when that military man died, he said that God allowed his friend to see into the spirit realm and he saw his spirit lift up out of his body and rise to God, ascended to God. But he said when he did, he said, I saw something fall off that I'd I'd never seen it before. And it was like a mask that went over his whole face, like a half circle. And it was on his whole face. And he said, and it fell off. And he said, God allowed me to see, there was like a video playing in that mask. And he said, it was past troubling scenes of his life. That it that the enemy had just clamped that thing on there, and it just he couldn't get away from these scenes because they kept replaying like a mass stuck on him. Hebrews nine verse fourteen. How much more shall the blood of Jesus purge your conscience, purge the replay of the mind? So you say, Pastor Nancy, how do I experience that? Say, I receive the blood of Jesus that purges the replay of the mind. Every computer has a delete button to get rid of the information that was stored on it. That's right. The blood of Jesus is the, is the delete button on your past. Amen. The delete button on your sin. Yes. The delete button on all the mistakes, the, the failures, the misses. Just say, I lay the blood of Jesus on that. And you just, instead of your mind being harassed, by the replay of your mind, just imagine Jesus with his hands on you and that blood flowing over your mind. Amen. Cleansing it, purging it. Say, no, the blood cleanses it. Thank you, Jesus, that the blood has cleansed it. The blood has washed it away. No more replay of the mind. No more rehearsing of the past. No more things that trouble the thought life. You can be free. Just receive what the blood of Jesus paid for for you. Amen. Why? It purges the replay of the mind from dead works so that you can serve the living God, so that those things won't hinder your fellowship with God anymore. Hallelujah. I tell you what, these things are a blessing to know. Amen. Well, you don't want to miss upcoming episodes of Jesus the Healer. We're so glad to spend this time with you. And know this until next time. Remember, Jesus is the Healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, Peace, Living Free from Worry, she teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 4th through the 6th. We would like everyone attending to pre-register on our website, DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting God to do great things. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.